I would like to just show you guys another example of finding the unit tension factor and the unit normal factor, and this time we are going to do it at a specific time value, t is equal to 2. Here we have the r already, let's just go ahead and get started. For the unit tension factor as a function of t, this right here is just the derivative of r with respect to t and divided by the magnitude of it. So it's the velocity divided by the magnitude of the velocity or the velocity divided by the speed. So take the derivative of this. So take the derivative of t to the third power, bring the 3 to the front. 3 and 3 cancel and then minus 1. So we get t squared and that's the i component. And then we add the derivative of this. Put the 2 to the front and then minus 1. 2 and 2 cancel, so it's just t. And then we have the j component. And then I'm just going to divide it by the magnitude. So I'm just going to open the square root and I'm going to square the first component and then add it with the square of the second component. And in fact, we can simplify this a little bit because this right here is t to the fourth plus t squared. We can factor out the t squared and that is t squared plus one. And we can just take the square root of the first and the square root of the second. And because we care about when t is equal to 2, which is greater than 0. So when we cancel square and the square root, we can just get t. So t times the square root of t squared plus 1. This way, we can cancel one of this with this, and this right here will be gone, so just 1. So after all the reductions, we will get t on the top over the denominator, which is just this. And then that's the i component, and then we add, this is just now 1, over that, which is square root of t squared plus 1, and that's the j component. So this right here is the general form, and that will help us to get any unit tension factor at any time. So this right here is the general form, and that will help us to get the unit tension factor at time t. Now we just need to plug in t equals 2 into all the little t's. So we will get 2 in here, we have 2 over 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5 in the square root. So 2 over square root of 5, i plus, put 2 in here, we have 1 over square root of 5, j. So this right here, we'll do it. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the unit normal factor. And because we only have a 2D curve, right? And we have found our unit tension factor. So as long as we understand what's going on, you can actually figure out this within a minute. Let me show you. First, I'm just going to sketch a graph of this right here real quick, because we need to know how the curve is traveled, the orientation of the curve. Let's see. When t is equal to 0, we get 0 and 0. So we start at the origin. Next, when t is equal to 1, we have 1 third and 1 half. So let's say here is 1 third, and let's say here is 1 half. So this is when t equals 1. Now when t is equal to 2, we have a over 3, and 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So let's say here is 8 over 3, and let's say here is 2. So this is t equals 2. So you can see the curve will look like this. And the important thing is, how the curve is concave and how it travels. Now, we have the unit tension factor when t is equal to 2. So this tells us we have it like this. This is our t, which is 2 over square root of 5i, and that's the x component, and then we add 1 over square root of 5j, and that's the y component. And just think about it in the good old days. This tells you that you go to the right 2 over square root of 5 times. This right here tells you to go up 1 over square root of 5 times. Now, how can we create something that's perpendicular to this? In this case, we are going to rotate it this way. Because, remember, we have the t and also the n, right, based on the right-hand rule. It helps. t and the n. In fact, the n is always going to be 
inside of how the curve is concave. That's why we need to sketch a curve. So n is going to be right here. That said, you see, we just have to go what? Remember earlier, this is this value. Now you turn this way, so that's that. You just have to switch the components. This right here will be here, which is 2 over square root of 5. And then earlier, we went up 1 over square root of 5 times. Well, this time, we are going to the right. You just switch the components. 1 over square root of 5, i, 2 over square root of 5, j. But notice, this is going downward, so you will have to negate the y component. And in fact, you have the answer. n is equal to 1 over square root of 5, i, minus 2 over square root of 5, j. That's it. But of course, I will still show you guys the formula way because we don't get 2D curves all the time. Here we go. This right here, we will have to differentiate the unit tension factor with respect to little t, and then we have to divide it by its magnitude. So dt dt. OK, here we go. We are going to look at this and take the derivative. So let me use the quotient rule for that. I'm going to square the denominator. and then put the bottom to the top right here. So square root of t squared plus 1. And we multiply by the derivative of the, the top, which is 1, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is something over 2 square root of the inside. And then use the chain rule, so multiply by 2t here. So that is the derivative of that. And perhaps let's simplify this a little bit. This right here gives us square root of t squared plus 1 minus the 2 and 2 cancel, t times t, we get t squared, and over square root of t squared plus 1. Square square root cancel, so t squared plus 1. Let's get rid of the complex fraction by multiplying the top and bottom by square root of t squared plus 1. So this times that will give us, oh, and also let me do here, so this times that will give us t squared plus 1. And then this times that they cancel. So we will just have minus t squared over this and that they have the same input. This is to the first power. This is to the 1 half power. So we can write it as the 3 half power with t squared plus 1 inside. And we see t squared minus t squared cancel. So this is just going to be that. Next, we will differentiate this. And to do so, I'm just going to write it as t squared plus 1 raised to the negative 1 half power. And then we can just use the power rule and also the chain rule. Bring this to the front, minus 1. So that's negative 1 half, parentheses, t squared plus 1 raised to the negative 3 half power times the derivative of the inside, which is 2t. 2 and 2 cancel. And that's pretty much what we can do, right? In this case, we do have an extra t on the top, though, and also a minus. So we will have a minus t over that. Let's go ahead and put on the bottom. So t squared plus 1 raised to the 3 half power, and we have the j component. Now, let's go ahead and find the magnitude of this. So divided by, let's open the big square root, and then we are going to square the first component and then add it with the square of the second component. So I put this in here. And I also put this in here. So we have a negative t over t squared plus 1 raised to the 3 half power. And let's just work this out. Square and then the half power cancel. So the first part we get is just 1 over t squared plus 1. And then yes, it's to the third power. Next, negative t squared is just plus t squared. Squares and uh, half power cancel, so the bottom here is t squared plus 1 to the third power. Well, this and that, they have the same denominator, so we can just put them together. So this is just 
1 plus t squared over, this is t squared plus 1 to the third power. It's actually not so bad, because this and that, the inputs are the same. The order of addition doesn't matter, of course. So you can cancel this with one of them. And guess what? Square and the square root. Squ square and the square root cancel. So the whole thing on the bottom is just 1 over that t squared plus 1. Okay? To continue, notice that this and that we can actually factor out the following. Let me just factor out 1 over t squared plus 1 raised to the first power. Okay? So that being said, you will see that this right here will just give us 1 over parentheses t squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. And then we have the i minus t over t squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. And then j. Alright? And all over the bottom, which is 1 over t squared plus 1. Cancel, cancel. So, n of t is just equal to this right here. And finally, if we want to get n at t is equal to 2, just put 2 into all the t's. And the half power is the same as the square root. So here we have 1 over, you know, just 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. So 1 over square root of 5 i. Does this look familiar? Yes, right? And then put 2 in here, so of 2, this is 5, square root, right? And you see, we have a minus here. Minus 2 over square root of 5, j. Alright? So, t and n, 